When you come across a subwoofer amplifier that says 1000 watts and is $63, typically you're going to think that's max power. The amp I'm showing today is not that, unfortunately, no longer available and we'll talk about why later in the video. Now the first thing that's hilarious about this is on the box you can see on the amp it says designed by America. Who dat? This is Dick Riculous. D <laughs> but wait, it gets better. Further investigation of the box, if we scroll over here, has an audiophile cone rubber surround, impedance 4 ohms, and a magnet grade A on an amplifier. If they're just plain out lying to you, we are here and we're going to report it. Now we've determined there's some shady stuff going on, let's uh, take a closer look at the box here and find out what's inside. First off, we get three of Allen's keys, as well as some mounting screws, and we have the instruction manual for the N1 and N4 amplifier. We do have the N1 model, which is a monoblock. We'll get into the specs and some of the features a little bit later, but let's go ahead and pull the rest of the amplifier out of the box. Take a closer look. Here's a top view of the amp. You can see it has kind of a copper color finish at the top, which is an aluminum plate. Also a black aluminum plate at the bottom. They did change the text. This say designed in USA now instead of made by America. The branding here is data sat. We're going to talk about that later as well. Let's take off the screws here on this panel. Again, this is a aluminum panel. It actually seems really nice. Feels makes the amp feel kind of fancy almost. And honestly, it looks a lot like a Diamond Audio Hex Series amplifier, which I'm showing here. These days, more than ever, it seems companies just copy other people's designs and use it as their own. Once you remove this top cover, you do have options here for sensitivity, phase control, variable subsonic, a boost frequency as well as a boost level, and a crossover frequency as well. The overall look and the fit and finish of this amplifier really don't fit into the ultra budget category of this amp. All the connections are on one end, which makes it super easy to install. As far as the different options, we have Power Protect LED, Ground Remote 12 volt. The ground and 12 volt are four gauge. Has dual 30 amp fuses, the ATC style. Has a single speaker output, which will handle eight gauge speaker wire. When we get over to the RCAs, you'll notice it says input above that, which is not exactly correct. The input is on the left side for the right and left. The output is on the right side, again for right and left. It does pass full range signals as well. We've talked about angled terminals before. I'm not a fan of them, but in this case with it being an ultra cheap amp, at least they have insert terminals instead of the screw down type, so this is nice. As far as dimensions go, 10.9 inches on the long side, 7.5 inches for the width, two inches for the height. Although the manual does seem to be pretty thorough, does not give us voltage ratings for the amplifier. 4 ohms, 410 watts, 2 ohms, 600 watts, 1 ohm, 1000. And is that RMS or peak? I don't know because it doesn't say. Now let's fire up the SMD, the more engineering amplifier dyno so we can test the power output of this amp. Some of the things you'll be seeing, the RMS power output is on the left, the ohm load is in the middle, the voltage of the dyno is on the right. We're also going to be showing the clamp meter so we can uh, measure the efficiency of the amp. Four ohms, it's rated 410 watts at who knows what voltage. Let's send a 40 hertz tone into the amp, see what we get. And yeah, we're a little shy, 375 at 14.42 volts. Now the certified test does take us up to 1% distortion, so the uncertified test takes us up to clipping. Let's see if we can get that 410 up at clipping. And close, but not quite, 404 at 14.24 volts. And the third test here, which is a dynamic RMS power test, sends a pulse tone of 40 hertz into the amplifier. And yes, you can see it does that 410 watts plus some, 439 at 14.68. Now, what about the efficiency? 88%, what? Say it's not true. Speaking of efficiency, what is efficiency? It's a ratio of power input versus power output. Higher percentage means more efficient, but not necessarily more better. Class D, we expect to see 70 to 90%. Class AB, 40 to 70%. This is a class D amplifier. Next up, we're going to try the two ohm test, which rated 600 watts at who knows the voltage. Certified test first to 1% THD. We're a little shy. 555 at 600 watts. Now what about the uncertified test up to clipping? Can we get that 600 watts? Yes, we can. 
629 at 14.04 volts. Wow, $63 amp here, my friends. Let's try the dynamic test at two ohms and color me even more impressed. Check it out. 788 watts at 14.59. Now what about the efficiency at two ohms? Notice it dropped significantly, 70%. Now let's move on to the one ohm test. Rated 1000 watts. Again, we're not sure if that is dynamically, if it's at clipping, if it's at what. Let's try certified test first and we get 651. So nowhere near that 1000 watts it's rated, but let's not give up yet. Let's try the uncertified test. Can we get the thousand watts uncertified? No, 800 at 13.81. But again, we're not done yet. So let's go to the dynamic test. Can we get it dynamically? Oh yes, look at this. 1,294, I think it's gonna jump again. 1,314 watts at 14.45 for a $63 amp. Now the efficiency is hurting though. 56.2% at one ohm, ouch. Just saw all the numbers here. We're showing the results. You can see them in a single page format. Color me impressed. I had no idea this amplifier would even do close to its rated power dynamically for 63 bucks. Now let's hook it up to the subwoofers. See how it sounds. Get ready to bump. I was trying to wake up the neighbors. Little bass, I love you. Basotronics, Big Wizzy, base of Halloween. Let's try the woofer test with the $63 Amazon 1000 watt amp. Here we go. Yes, friends, that was something falling off the walls. Makes me jump every time. That was some crazy bump for a $63 amp, but let's find out what's inside. And I would say, yes, it's more than $63 would suggest. Let's take off all the screws. There's three across the front, a few on the top. Then we have to take all the little screws out of the bottom. And we're getting there. Trust me, this is six times speed. It getting there much quicker than it took me. Then we have to use the Phillips screwdriver and go down through the amp to take off the side panels. And then we can just tilt the uh, bottom plate up so that we can get into the internals and see what's going on here. Here you can see the guts. Single transformer there. Have some rail caps, some filter caps. As far as the rail caps, 2200 microfarad, 80 volt, 105 degrees Celsius, ASCA, I don't know that. 1800 microfarad, 35 volts, niche cons for the filtering. Yeah, are those real niche cons? I tend to doubt it for a $63 amp. RCAs are the typical board mount style. These are the cheap ones. And here you can see the vertical board. This is the processing board which handles the gain, the subsonic filter, the crossover, and other settings. Now let's take off these little clamps so we can take a closer look at the transistors, find out what they are for those of you who are electronics geeks. Here you go. The RFZ 44 ends for the power supply section. Again, these are commonplace. And the outputs are the 200N, 15N, N-channel MOSFETs. So I was really bummed when I found this amplifier was no longer available because I was ready to show it to you guys and thought it would be a great little budget banger setup. They do have a website, datasataudio.com. They talk about, you know, hey, we do this, we do that. We're very a good company. But then 
I noticed Datasat Digital Entertainment is actually a company that makes real high-end home audio equipment, like for the home cinema. They make the 16-channel Fat Daddy audio processor, $23,170. Is that thing turbocharged? <laughs> According to their website, every film released 1993 to 2016 included Datasat Digital Sound. This theater processor here, this AP25, they don't even list a price for it. So I bet this data sack company said nope to the other one and shut them down. That is my theory. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this amp that you can't get. Obviously it's cheap, did rated power dynamically, has a variable subsonic filter, variable bass boost and frequency, looks pretty slick, has insert terminals instead of the screw down terminals which are prevalent on the cheap amplifiers. Things that consider or cons there's no bass remote it does have the angle terminals which i'm not a fan of doesn't do the rated power certified yeah it's unavailable probably never going to be back again the name the logo everything they use is exactly the same as datasat digital entertainment it's a shame this is a pretty decent app especially for 63 bucks too bad they didn't pick out a different name obviously they're trying to go off the name of a well-established company and that company is like Nope, we're not using y'all's cheap stuff. You can't use it and use our name. So too bad. You can't buy one of these. If you were able to get one before they became unavailable, good for you. Pretty decent app. This is Big D. Till next time, you know where I'm at. I'm out of here. Pop the fuse. 835 watts, 14.3. So after we popped the 30 amp fuses, we put in some 40 amp fuses and did some lower tests. At 0.8, we got 686 at certified on the 0.8 test, uncertified up to clipping. Again, look at the current pull there, over 100 amps, 116 amps. 882 at 14.38, and then let's try dynamic. See how much we get dynamically at 0.8 ohms. <laughs> Over 1,500 watts. 1,532 at 14.74. Thanks again for watching. Check out my other vids. BB out. You know how them sound waves go?